Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Maximizing Text Recognition Accuracy with Image Transformers in Spark OCR. I'm joined here by Nicola Melnick, Senior Software Engineer at John Snow Labs. Before I turn it over to Nicola, I do want to cover a few housekeeping items. We welcome your questions today. Please type your questions into the GoToWebinar control panel on the side of your screen and we will be answering all of the questions at the end of the webinar. If you have any technical difficulties, please shoot me an email and I'll try to help you out. My email is on the screen. And we will be sending out the recording of today's webinar. So you should receive that within a couple of days. Okay, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to you, Mikola. Hello, welcome to webinar. I'm a Nicole Melnik, I'm a lead uh, developer of Park OCR library and today uh, we will have a webinar about Spark OCR. Here is a timeline of our webinar. First time means uh, I will we will have introduction to Spark OCR. Uh, next uh, I will present some example of Spark OCR pipelines and uh, Next, uh, we will have image preprocessing. Uh, it is a main topic of our webinar. And after that, uh, we will I will present uh, in action Spark OCR in action. We will have some examples in notebooks and uh, some Q and session. So, uh, what is Spark OCR? Spark OCR it, uh, is a library based on Spark, Spark ML lib. It uh, offers various transformers for optical character recognition, PDF processing, image processing, layout analysis, and some other utility transformers for deals with uh, text and uh, images. Uh, Spark OCR has some benefits. It is um, scalability guaranteed by Spark, running in isolated environment for dealing with personal data, out-of-the-box support for different input-output formats, different image formats, PDFs, DICOM, and uh, it provides more good uh, accuracy than existing uh, open source solutions. And another one benefit is compatibility with Spark NLP and another Spark uh, ML transformers. So we can uh, combine Spark NLP models, transformers, annotators in same Spark ML pipeline and have complex uh, pipelines. Common use cases for Spark uh, OCR pipelines, it is uh, digitized scanned PDFs and images, identify PDF and image documents and also DICOM documents, extract uh, text uh, from PDF and uh, process it using Spark NLP and render back or hang light text uh, on PDF. And also we can use uh, Spark OCR for process images in uh, Spark uh, environment. So we can create some data sets for training models, etc. Okay. Next, uh, let's uh, look uh, to Spark OCR transformers more detail. Main transformer, it's image to text. It is optical character recognition transformer. It's a base of uh, Spark OCR. Uh, another group's uh, transformers for layout analysis. It contains image layout analyzer for detect regions with text on the page. 
and image split regions for split image to regions with text. And uh, we have also some utility transformers for deal with positions. It is positions finder and update text positions. We will have some examples which demonstrate how to use it. Another one big group of transformers is transformers for dealing with PDF files. It, here we have a PDF to text transformer for extract text from select table, PDF, PDF to image for rendering each page to image, image to PDF for storing images back to PDF format, text to PDF transformer for rendering text with positions back to PDF and uh, PDF draw regions transformer for highlighting some regions or text on in existing PDFs. Uh, Image processing transformers. Here yeah. we have a big group of uh, image uh, preprocessing transformers. Here we have binary to image transformer. We need it for convert binary data, which we can read using binary file data source of Spark to internal image structure. And after that, we can deal with uh, image as a uh, field in data frame, as column in data frame. And after that, we can apply some operations uh, in data frame to image. So next one, we have image ban bannerizer for image binarization by providing custom threshold, image adaptive thresholding. It is uh, image binarization using local thresholding. It supports uh, different methods such as Gaussian, Mian, Median. Also we have image scalar for scaling image by custom scalar. And uh, we have also image adaptive scaler, which uh, detects font size and scale image for how desired uh, font size. It is useful for um, scale if you have a small size of um, characters on image. And uh, this transformer can automatically do this scaling for how good uh, output when we work with SR transformers. Image skew corrector, it's, uh, it is uh, autocorrect, is this uh, transformer autocorrect skew for images with text. And uh, we have uh, also image noise score for computer noise score for images. Image remove objects for remove small big objects from image and uh, image morphology uh, opening for applying uh, morphology opening operation to image and image draw regions. It's a big group of uh, image preprocessing transformer. We will uh, talk about uh, them more detail today. So uh, next, uh, let's uh, look to the Spark OCR pipeline. Uh, it is an example of uh, Spark uh, OCR pipeline for uh, simple workflow. We need to digitize uh, text from PDF with, uh, which contain image with text and store uh, results back to PDF. 
but uh, a PDF. Here we have uh, a first transformer PDF to image for convert PDF to image per page. After that, uh, adaptive thresholding and remove objects for cleaning uh, background and uh, main SR transformer image to text. And after that, we can store back to PDF using text to PDF transformer. It's the simplest uh, workflow, but we can uh, combine uh, any transformers and uh, for create more complex workflows. Okay, uh, let's uh, look to some uh, real examples in not a book. Here we have uh, some standard uh, not a book from our Spark OSR workshop and a few cells for initializing uh, license and uh, Spark session importing. SR transformers and here we define simple OCR transformers and pipeline. This pipeline contains only two transformers, PDF to image and image to text. This pipeline can process PDF on input and in output we will have data frame with a text field which will contain recognized text from PDF. So for reading for PDF we can use binary file data source and so we need to specify Pass to the input file or files, read files to data frame. After that, we can apply our transformer to this uh, data frame, and uh, as a result, we will have a data frame with following fields. First one contain page number, text, per for each page and confidence. And here we'll display results. So uh, another one example, more complex for identification problem. Here we also have some initialization, importing and uh, now Next one, we have more complex identification NLP pipeline. And uh, Spark OCR pipeline, which will include the identification pipeline. This pipeline identify DICOM documents. So we have DICOM to image transformer. And uh, after that, OCR image to text transformer and uh, some utility uh, transformers for uh, transform results and draw regions and storing back to results to daikon format and let's look what can we have here is the reading her daikon file to the data frame. And after that, uh, we also transform uh, DICOM to image using uh, DICOM to image transformer manually without our pipeline and display your uh, image from DICOM document. So we can see here some scan. 
with which contain text and uh, some personal data on the image. And uh, here we, and also some metadata in JSON format. And next uh, we can call our pipeline and apply it to original input to data frame and store results to daikon file. And after that we can read again results and show it and display it. So here we have uh, image but with uh, rectangle which had it uh, some personal data name and data and some IDs and also the identified metadata. So let's uh, back uh, to our next topic. Okay. Image preprocessing. Why do we need to image preprocessing? We need it if we need to if we have a bad quality of results, so but uh, and we need to improve it. So a bad quality we have if we have some background noise on original image so we can a lot of dots when we have scanned documents or we have really bad quality and uh, this type of or another situation when we need to, to recognize text from in nature center so we need to remove the ground and uh, recognize only text. Image preprocessing operations which we have in Spark OSR. We have uh, adaptive thresholding here, morphological operations such as erosion, dilation, opening, closing, removing objects, skew correction, Thresholding. Uh, thresholding is the simplest way to segment objects from the ground. If the ground is relatively uniform, then you can use a global thresholding value to binarize the image by pixel intensity. But if you, there are large variation in the background intensity, however, Adaptive thresholding may produce better results, as can we see here. We have different intensity of uh, the ground and uh, global thresholding produce uh, these results. And with adaptive thresholding, we can have more good results. So we can uh, have uh, we can recognize all text here. And uh, we have here some examples. Uh, another, uh, we have this source image. And when we apply global thresholding using image bin binarizer, we can see this uh, results with different value of threshold. And if we apply adaptive thresholding to this image, we will have a bit different results. We can remove uh, some black area from original image 
and this will improve to us uh, or improve uh, help to us to improve quality of uh, image of, of uh, text recognition. So here we can have definition for image adaptive thresholding transformer, which we can include to our uh, pipeline. So we should specify input column with image, output column, column, block size, and offset. These parameters uh, which need to set manually and experiment a bit with them, but uh, we will have some default values which uh, can work for most of cases, but uh, for have more good uh, results, we need to play with these parameters. So we have block size, uh, default value 170, but uh, it should be odd. And uh, block size are very related to, to the type of image. If we have uh, very big change of intensity, we should use the smallest uh, value and if we have uh, one intensity for background we can use uh, biggest values and uh, also we have we can specify different methods and we support uh, here uh, gaussian mian and median methods and also we can specify custom offset for improve uh, results next one big uh, group of uh, transformers it's uh, transformers for deal with uh, morphological operations morphological operations often take a binary image and the structure element, also call it kernel, as input and combine them using a set of operation, intersection, union, intersection, union, inclusion, complement. They process objects in the input image based on characteristic of its shapes, which are encoded in the structure elements. The structure element used in practice in generally much smaller than image and uh, can have different shapes. We can have square, rectangle, diamond, disc, octagon, star. So two base opera morphological operations are erosion and dilation. Erosion, the erosion operation uses a uh, structure element for reducing the shapes contained in the image. So, for example, we have input image A, structure element B, and uh, we will go throughout contour and reduce the uh, size of uh, input shape. And if you, we will apply it to the sum character we will reduce the size of character so there is a, another example we have source image it contains a lot of uh, artifacts on small artifacts on the ground and after applying we can uh, reduce uh, count of uh, artifacts on the ground but uh, this also affect uh, text characters so 
sometimes this can improve uh, very well if you have a good text uh, but uh, a lot of small uh, dots on the ground next uh, operation is the deletion the deletion operation uses uh, structure element for expanding the shapes contained in the input image. So uh, here we are using input image and structure element B and extend our input uh, shapes and uh, we can uh, fill some holes on image. So if we apply to some image uh, which contain text uh, with bad quality, we can have a big improvement. Another one operation is opening. Very simply, an opening is defined as an erosion followed by and deletion using the same structure element for both operations. So main difference uh, from erosion here is that uh, when we apply opening operation, we will have uh, same size of output uh, shapes. Yeah, but uh, we can remove some small artifacts. So for input uh, shape A using construction element B, we will have this output. And uh, we can see definition for opening operation using uh, erosion and uh, deletion operations. And uh, when we apply it to same source image, we can see here removing uh, dots on, from the ground, but we have same size of uh, characters. And uh, this uh, will not uh, affect uh, characters at all. So this technique uh, uh, more useful as preprocessing her text before image to text transformer. Next operation, morphological closing. Closing is opening performance in reverse. It is uh, define it simply as a uh, deletion followed by an erosion using the same structure element for both operations. So for input shape A, we are using construction element B, we will have this output. So closing can uh, fill some holes, small holes on image, on input shape, so this uh, technique, this operation can uh, restore some symbols, some characters in the text. Here we have also some example for same input source image. And we can see here that uh, some of the dots here merged and uh, some characters uh, we can see, can see here need to, to scale image for we will uh, look uh, more detail in our examples in notebooks for dealing with uh, image uh, morphology operations, we have image morphology operation transformer. 
and uh, we can specify type of operations when we set operation parameter we can set here erosion dilation opening closing we can set a kernel shape it is a structure element and we support uh, this set of uh, shapes and we can specify a kernel size and also edge transformer for edge transformer we should specify input column and output column for storage results and next one operations uh, related to moving objects and uh, sometime we need to remove small objects for example here and we can uh, use uh, removing objects here and uh, sometime we also we need to remove small small holes and uh, another one options when we need to remove small objects but without affecting our text so we have separate uh, operations uh, for this uh, when we can specify only mean font size and uh, transformer automatically calculate size of minimum objects which uh, we can remove from original image but without affecting uh, our characters in text and another one options removing big objects so we can remove images lines tables and uh, this uh, sometime very improve quality of recognized text so for this operation we have image remove objects uh, transformer and here parameters we can specify one of them or few or combine and specify a few of uh, these parameters and uh, these operations will apply sequentially to image and if you need to disable some of operations we should set uh, this parameter to none and uh, we in this case we can apply on the one of the operations next one useful image transformer it's a skew correction here we have some example of call image skew correction transformer and uh, example of work we have original text uh, and uh, we skew and uh, after applying this uh, transformer we have this one output also we can set notation angel we can uh, set this parameter for manually and uh, specify angle for rotate our image to some specific uh, angle this uh, maybe can be useful if you need to prepare some data sets or we have some fixed skew for all data sets for all images and we now need to use uh, automatic skew correction okay and right now let's switch to our notebooks and see some examples uh, here is example for processing uh, image uh, in natural scene so we have initialization of spark session here imports 
and more interesting part here. Here we define CR transformers. Here we have binary to image trans transformer for convert image binary data to image structure. After that, scalar image adaptive thresholding, image remove objects, and image morphologic operations. And uh, of end of the pipeline, we have image to text transformer. Here we assemble pipeline. We add uh, image to data frame in same way. Apply our transformer and results. And the more interesting part here, we can see here original image. Here we have uh, image after applying uh, adaptive thresholding. So after applying, we remove it in most uh, all background, but we have some, still have some lines and small artifacts, which uh, uh, OCR transformer can detect as symbols. If we apply image to, or apply, image uh, to text transformer to this image, we will have a lot of uh, noise uh, the characters. Uh, on this step, uh, we applied uh, morphology, uh, on, we applied removing objects, so we removed uh, small and big objects from image and on final step we apply morphology closing and if you compare with previous image we can see on previous image some bro broken characters and here we restored them using morphology closing operations So this, uh, and as a result, we can have uh, text without any uh, other characters, only original text. Okay, another one example which demonstrate more detail morphology opening operations. This example, this check, we had, here we read uh, image to the data frame, transform it to image and apply image scalar. And here is original image. We have uh, not good quality of this scan. This is scan it image check. And uh, if we apply it uh, to original image, we have uh, bad quality of results. So we can demonstrate here applying image adaptive threshold in here. After applying, we have all symbols here, but uh, still have some dots on the ground. After that, we will apply morphological closing operations. And this 
a bit improved uh, quality. This restored some symbols. And after that, we will apply erosion. This uh, a bit uh, reduced size of uh, these dots and uh, And as final step, we can remove small objects. This uh, operation removed almost all dots from image, but we still have some dots here. We can't remove it using this operation because if we set more big uh, size for removing, we will remove uh, also part of uh, our characters such as here, and we also can remove these dots and this very affect our results. And as we know, step we can apply image to text transformer and uh, we will have these results. Here we, in most, uh, Recognize it all text without any other characters. Okay, and the next uh, example. With removing background noise. We have uh, some of our pipeline here, more complex. It also contains scanner, adaptive thresholding, image morphology operations, removing objects. And uh, in most same, but uh, with about different parameters and here is and let's look to original image in this example. This example contain a lot of complex background and. Uh, After applying her adaptive thresholding, we have more good results. A morphology opening operation a bit to reduce its size of uh, dots on the ground, but uh, did not affect characters. And uh, final. Operations uh, removing uh, objects, uh, remove it uh, all in most all small dots on the ground, but uh, we still have uh, dots and related to text. So here we have, uh, we can see results and for compare F1 score, we can go back to the, our presentation, to our slides. I compare it to a few products. Here, so for example, I applied same image to Tesseract, and uh, I had uh, F1 score very small in this case. Oh, sorry. So 
Tesseract uh, did not detect uh, characters of on start of the lines where, where we have a lot of uh, background artifacts and uh, this very affected results. Uh, same image I applied to, uh, I uh, try to recognize using maybe a fine reader and it uh, have more good results, but still have some noise, noisy characters. AWS uh, Textract have, as for me, really good results. And uh, say, and uh, this is results from our last notebook. Here is the uh, same image, but after image uh, preprocessing using uh, Spark OCR transformers and uh, results here. And also we have really good results. Okay, it's uh, in most uh, all from today webinar, and uh, I am what a bit. Uh, I want a bit uh, present our next steps, how we want to improve uh, Spark OCR in future. So we want to add uh, extraction text by coordinators for process form checks, etc. So if we need to extract some values from documents and from form, uh, this very useful uh, functionality and many customers ask about it. So we plan to work on it. Another one feature is extract uh, data from tables and uh, provide results as uh, data frame or CSV, so uh, we'll have possibility, right now we have possibility to recognize text uh, from tables, but uh, we have unstructured results. And uh, after implementing this functionality, we will have uh, uh, struct structured results. Also, we will work uh, on improving performance and simplify installations and uh, improving the layout analysis. This uh, can give to us more good results in future. Thank you for attention. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Nicola. And uh, as a reminder, we are going to have a Q&A portion. Um, so please remember to type your questions into the GoToWebinar um, Q&A panel. Um, and before we dive into that, I did um, want to make a, a couple of announcements. Um, so we do have two upcoming Spark NLP trainings that are now open for registration. On July 28th and 29th, we'll um, be hosting a two-day, three-hour training, um, Spark NLP live online training. And on August 4th and 5th, we'll be hosting another two-day, three-hour training on Spark NLP for healthcare data scientists. So I'm going to paste the link to that in the chat right now. And you can click there to get some more information on the agenda um, for those two trainings and register there. Um, and then one more exciting announcement, the registration for NLP Virtual Summit is now open. These are going to be two weeks long. Um, so week one is going to include 30 unique sessions with a special NLP healthcare track. 
And week two is going to feature beginning to advanced trainings with uh, certification. So attendees will also have an opportunity to participate in a datathon and join coffee chats with speakers and industry experts. And I am pasting um, the link to that in the chat as well. Um, all right, let's dive into um, the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Awesome. So um, first question that I see um, that came through, um, Nicola, a significant amount of information in financial and healthcare documents is contained in tables. Um, so what support do you have for tables embedded within OCR documents? Okay, as I said before, uh, we, we are working on supporting for tables. So in near future, we will have uh, some implementation. So, we know that uh, our customers need this support and we are working on it. So, maybe in a few months we will have this functionality. Perfect. Um, some people are also asking um, if we'll be sending out the recording in PowerPoint, and the answer to that is yes. Um, so you should receive that within the next couple of days. Um, another question, are you using any deep learning image understanding technology under the covers? In quote? Right now we are using image preprocessing technologies for uh, uh, segment uh, text uh, and uh, we're using uh, deep learning for uh, character recognition for when we uh, select uh, when we, for each uh, character and we are working right now on uh, uh, layout analysis using uh, deep learning so but we uh, we are working on it, but we still did not complete this. Um, another question, how did you calculate the F1 score for accuracy in OCR? Uh, we have uh, some utility function, which uh, we can uh, use also, and in uh, Spark OCR, and we are using Flevenstein distance and uh, after that, uh, calculate uh, one score. I uh, I can provide later, but uh, more details about implementation if you need. Please, maybe if you need uh, some formula, I can provide it to email, maybe or add it to, to documentation. Perfect. Yeah, and then some people are asking um, if we'll be sharing the notebook and where can those be found? And I see uh, some additional questions. Uh, can you process table with our structure? Maybe our structure. Mm. We have uh, some uh, imp custom implementation for some clients which if you need to, to process some specific uh, re reports and extract some table and so we support some uh, parsers for some specific uh, documents so if you need to we can implement And uh, we are working on some general solution. Perfect. Um, and then one final question: What is a performance image pre-processing? Uh, in general, this is very related to, to size of image, but uh, in compare with uh, image to text transformer this uh, 
image preprocessing pre need uh, less uh, time than OCR step. Perfect. Um, well, if anyone has any additional questions, um, feel free to reach out and we can always follow up on those offline. And then just a final reminder, we will be sending out um, a recap email um, within in the next couple of days. And we'll also send out the links to the training and the upcoming NLP summit. Um, and we can definitely send the link to the notebook as well there um, as well. Um, so with that, um, thank you, Nicola, and thank you for everyone on the call. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.